we are recording. Welcome everybody, my name is Rob Brown. We are doing another in a series of uh, virtual panels in these crazy times with leaders of global accounting networks and associations. And I'm delighted to have back two guests that we've had before. So you must be doing something right if you get invited back a second time. So Tony and uh, Tenda, I'm just gonna ask you to introduce yourselves in just a moment. And we've got a few questions that we're gonna go through today because we are in unprecedented times. Tendai, I'm just going to change your name here on the, the Zoom signature. And Tony, while I'm doing that, do you just want to give us a little introduction? Tell us about your role and the empire that you preside over. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Tony Sapaniak, I'm the global CEO for the Leading Edge Alliance. Uh, we've got uh, about $3 billion in cumulative revenue, uh, uh, predominantly in the U.S. <coughs> uh, the European would be our second largest uh, region, but we certainly do have uh, a, a presence and impact in Latin America, Africa, Middle East, as well as uh, Asia Pacific and Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and Tony, you've got to grow that, have you? It doesn't seem like that could get any bigger. Uh, there's, there's always room for growth. There's always yeah. room for growth. Well, we so. were just talking before we started the recording about Jeff Bezos and his personal wealth of 171 billion so you're a little short of that tony so there's room for improvement uh, uh, absolutely if the, if your measuring stick is the uh, <laughs> uh having a billion after the dollars then absolutely there is room for improvement wow well it's great to have you with us tony and, and tendai a little introduction from you and, and the empire that you are in charge of well I was thinking of how to start this, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to quote David Hay, you know, the boxer? The boxer, okay, yeah. Yes, yeah. He said, the first time was so nice that I had to do it twice. So this is why I had to come back. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. <laughs> um, so I joined Impact, um, I think about 10 years ago, been in this role from the age of 28, started with a little three-month-old on my hip and working from home and all of that, so... It's been amazing to just see the progression of the organization during this time. Uh, myself, I am the child of a freedom fighter and a nurse, traveled extensively. So I suppose coming into this role, that brought maybe a different perspective um, to our board and also to the association. But the proudest thing I have is our team, which has just as much of a cultural, cultural um, variation as our membership. So I'm from Zimbabwe. I have um, someone from Bulgaria, someone from Spain, from the United, someone from the United States, Thailand, Singapore, and South Africa, and someone from the UK. So even in our executive team, we're like a little global alliance of ourselves. So I think sure. that um, that brings a unique take to some of the stuff that we do. Well, you're ticking all the diversity buttons there, Tendai. <laughs> Just give us a feel for the uh, for the size of Impact Global. So globally, we are in about 60 countries, um, combined fee revenues, about 300 million. Uh, we are all over the world. I think we are heavy in Europe, and but I think we've ticked all of Latin America, and of course, we're in North America. Um, and at one point, we had someone in Vanuatu, you know, which I just thought was the crowning glory of, of impact, because I had to, to find it on the map. The word was bigger than the country and I thought yes but somehow we were there so um, nice spread for us but obviously always looking to grow always looking to get more connected you know for our members that's the thing isn't it and, and Tony let's just kick off by asking you is this a good time for growth is uh, are we feeling opportunistic at the moment I, I think it depends uh, if you if you're talking about the association space I mean there, I think uh, you know, member firms are, are a lot like clients, you know, they're, uh, they have life cycles and, and associations and networks offer different uh, points of value. And so there'll, there'll always be some movement uh, w within that. And, and so, you know, for us, it's always about right fit, you know, and the right fit is, you know, could be defined geographically, it could be defined, uh, you know, uh, by a specific industry sector, uh, say that we, we might need maybe, you know, maybe energy as an example. Uh, so it really kind of depends on, on what we're looking, you know, what we're looking for. It, you know, the leading edge alliance is, is not one of those that wants to be the biggest necessarily. It's really, it's, it's uh, and, and as Tendai, you know, can, can, uh, can attest, it, you know, it's not always just about the size, it's really about the connectivity 
uh, and, and ultimately the relationship. So, so is it a good time for growth? Uh, I, I think it's always a good time for growth. It, it just might look a little different today than it might, might have five years ago. Yeah. Do you feel it's a good time for growth, Tendai? Because you would feel that now is more important than ever for an accounting firm to be part of something bigger than themselves. They don't want to get isolated, do they? Um, I agree. I think um, any time is a good time for growth, uh, being that we're a membership organization. So increasing the connectivity between um, our firms and allowing them to be able to provide um, a seamless service across borders for their clients. Mm. I think that's always a good thing. Um, I do agree with Tony, though, that, you know, there is that balance between quality and quantity. And we won't grow for growth's sake because um, maybe there's a certain, our culture might be slightly different to other organizations. And we don't want to dilute that in the process of putting pins in a map. And I think the industry as a whole has been very, very good over the last few years of collaborating regardless of um, which, which organization we work for. So if I don't have a member in a certain place, I am more than happy to um, approach one of my colleagues um, in one of the other organizations because the key is still to provide a service and a contact and a connection and collaboration for our members. And I think um, that's something we can, we've, even during the season, we're seeing more and more of is that um, if you think of our organizations as borders and countries in their own rights, like there's more cross-border activity so like cross-network activity, cross-association activity. And I think that's a good thing because um, all our members benefit then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the accounting profession as a whole would not, be, uh, would not be accused of being easy to adapt. They're not particularly agile. They've done it the same way for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, a balance sheet is a balance sheet. So I want to ask you about lessons learned. What is this? global pandemic taught you or confirmed for you personally about the world that you live in? Tony. So I would, I think probably three things. Uh, one is, you know, people, even accountants are more adaptable and resilient than, than they think, or maybe give themselves yeah. credit. Have for. they had a bad rap? Do you think? <laughs> uh, well, no, no, that's, that's been earned. That's been <laughs> earned. And as a fellow accountant, uh, CPA, you know, I, I I own part of that part of that stigma, you know, because part of part of the upbringing is to do to do things in a certain way. That's part of the value that we provide, uh, you know, and our members provide to the, to their clients. So some of that is is earned, but some of it is really through training. Uh, but but when really forced uh, or, or presented with something as significant as this pandemic, this COVID nineteen, you know pending global recession, et cetera, people are more adaptable. And I would really, you know, give you the example of just the remote work. Uh, uh, I hear it because I'm here in the, in the United States, I hear, I get a much more U.S. perspective, but I do hear it around, uh, around the globe that this whole notion of remote working, you know, pre-2020 was, yeah, it's out there and it works kind of, sort of, and we tolerate it. Uh, but I, I think now it's okay, it, it can work uh, and it, it is working effectively. True, there are, some, there are some roles where it's not as effective and it's not an end all be all for everybody. Some people have, you know, they, they have working habits and styles where they need to be, you know, with people uh, more frequently. And that's, you know, that's, that's fine. Uh, but connected to that remote working, I, I think one of the things, that that this has really brought out for me is it's only served to reinforce I've never liked the term work-life balance uh, because I, I, I feel like it's it's a choice always a choice um, I, I really prefer the term work-life integration and I think what this global pandemic is doing with the remote working environment it is allowing people to adapt the work and personal, uh, their lives kind of integrating them more effectively. I hear of our member firms having people where, you know, they'll be up early, they'll, they'll, they'll spend a few hours early in the day, you know, then they'll maybe take a couple of hours off maybe with young kids, and then they'll, then they'll get back at it later in the day or even in the evening. And the work is all getting done. It's, it's all seamless. Uh, and so I, I think this notion of 
of work-life integration and the flexibility that it really provides, I, I think is, is, is a learning for me. Yeah, that's a great point, working from home. One accountant friend said to mine, I'm really enjoying working from home because now I can have three lunches a day. <laughs> so, <laughs> it is different. Uh, Tend out, what, what lessons have you learned from all of this? Um, Tony, I love that point about um, work, work-life integration. I yeah. have to- I've had to repeat it to myself a couple of times, so I don't want to forget that. That that that's really that's really good. Um, I think uh, one change is hard, but it can also be a good thing. So, like we're saying that um, before we've had remote working, we've had all of these systems. I remember we had a conference on future proofing your firm about three or four years ago, and some of the things about remote working, cloud, all of this we discussed, and it's like. At the time, there was a bit of resistance, but within the space of three months, the whole world has had to adapt. Um, and accountants, you know, have proved that they can do it. Um, I think for us as an organization, it was also about, like I said, I think in the last call, relevant, you know, relevant communication, not just bombarding everyone, because it was quite a learning curve for all of us. And we didn't want to get ground out and all of that. And I don't know, positivity, creativity, um, I think we can do a lot more than we thought we could in this industry. And I think half for me, as I tend to be a slightly more positive person, is celebrating the foundations. I think there's a story in, I think it's in Ezra, and it talks about the Israelites after they had put the foundations for the, for the temple. And they had a big old party and they were celebrating and crying tears of joy and everything. And it's like, we're not where we want to be but we're not where we were three months ago and we should celebrate um, the journey because I think we've achieved quite a lot as an industry and I think just as a, I don't know, as a population, you know, um, the world's been through a lot and we should just celebrate the process because we're coming out and we're still standing. Mm. I just wrote down one word, Tendai said there, Tony, which is resistance. Are you finding as I am that decisions are being made a lot faster and driving through change is sometimes now happening in weeks, whereas before it would have been months and even years. If you think of the, the hierarchy of an accounting firm, people are just getting stuff done now, aren't they? I, I think you're right. I, um, the, uh, the, the resistance is down, uh, yeah. in some cases by, by need. Uh, I, I, I do think, um, I do think you'll see it, popping back up a little bit where that resistance with going back to uh, back to the offices, I think you're going to see some resistance. And I think here in the States, uh, we've already seen some of that. But I would agree that, you know, uh, when as we went into the, you know, the pandemic and the lockdowns, I, uh, I, I just recall a number of member firms uh, sharing stories where it was, okay, we're going into, our town's going into lockdown. You guys have three hours to come in, get your stuff. If you need a, you know, an extra monitor, if you need an extra printer, et cetera, you know, go get it. And, and it was just decisions were being made very, very quickly. Uh, but you even see the adoption of, you know, Zoom, uh, you know, Zoom, you know, Teams, things like that, that, you know, that, that resistance is gone because, you know, while, we can't be together, we still need to be able to see each other. Uh, and so, you know, we have to embrace and adapt. So. And that's not just teams, is it, Tendai? No. We're, seeing, we're seeing this with clients as well. Before, yeah. clients would want, to, want you to get on a plane or get in the car and go face to face, and we want to eyeball you and shake your hand. But now I'm even hearing stories of accountants where they just don't wear ties anymore because their clients are sat there in their PJs and sat there in t-shirts with kids running around and dogs and the whole bar of what is acceptable has come down and it's okay to do it this new way, Tenda, isn't it? I think so. I, it, in my head, I still have that work-life integration um, thing um, that Tony said. And it's, um, we synthesized work and life, uh, you know, kind of merged them together. It's a blurring, isn't it now? Yeah. So it's, and that, that human aspect that we are running companies and organizations, but we have families and we have backstories and we have communities and bringing those two together and finding a way to thrive within an environment that a few months ago we would have thought would be chaotic. Mm. Um, and I think, 
I, I think it's a beautiful thing because it means maybe we are going to build more, I don't know, collaborative, community focused, I don't know, consistently client based um, organizations that have people in the center where it's not just a sound bite. It's not, nah, it's all about the people, the clients, the staff, the teams. It all revolves around the people and the technology is there to, I think it's there more to amplify the work of the people. Um, you know, in all, in all ways, with the technology on its own, it's a bunch of machines in a room and nothing would get done still. Mm. So I think it's, it's a nice balance we're going into now, I think. Well, you, you chatted about the adoption, the adaption there, Tony. Let's look at the smart choices that firms have made. You're talking to firms all the time. Have you mm. got any example of, of things that you've seen they, that they've done either as a firm or as an individual in response to these unprecedented times? Yeah, I think that, I think, you know, Tendai made a comment about the positivity. I think overall, uh, the firms that I've, I've spoken with over the last three, three or four months, you know, I have seen a lot of positivity mm. and, and, and forward, you know, forward thinking about uh, making the decisions that are needed, you know, to be able to uh, you know, survive the, the pandemic and the uncertainty, but then position to be able to thrive going forward. Uh, I, I, think, I think one one smart decision that a lot of firms have made is that, you know, when, uh, when times are good, you know, the partners, you know, and the owners of the businesses, you know, enjoy those times. Yeah. Uh, but I have, I, 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 don't, I don't know that I have a single example where firms, you know, the partners have not stepped up and said, you know, before we start going after, uh, you know, staff reduction specifically, uh, you know, we're, we're going to make sure that the, that the owners and the partners of this take the lead uh, on that. Now, I, and I think that's a positive thing. I think that's a great example of, of leadership. Now, that's not to say that there has not been uh, reductions, you know, for, for performance and that there hasn't been reductions as, you know, as we go into week 10, you know, 11, 12, et cetera, you need to, you need to, uh, run your business, but I, I think I think that's been one you know one positive thing. I, I think that there's been a lot of firms that have seen this uh, you know queuing uh, into the the positive uh, uh, focus. There there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, sure, there's a lot of things that are negative that are you know that are going on, but trying to remain positive and look at where there are opportunities around the government assistance. You know, I know that that's not all countries across the globe, but, but certainly there's a number of countries, you know, where, where clients need the, the assistance, need the understanding and the advice, and, and certainly, uh, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of organizations are focused on that, uh, you know, supporting clients in, in restructuring activities. So, I, 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 but I think it starts with, I think it starts with remaining, remaining forward looking that we will get through this. Uh, that that you know that attitude, uh, if you will. Mm. Tenda, what have you seen in terms of smart choices made by your member firms or actually individual accounting professionals to get through this? Um, I think a word that I have for the season was a lot to do with I think collaboration right. and consistency. That's so, two words, but yeah, we'll give sorry. you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think collaboration in the sense that I think just having a bit more space and a bit more time in our diaries mean that we are, our members, uh, I see they're collaborating a lot more closely. If we send out an SOS on a Friday, by Monday, we've got a solution. And consistency in terms of that our members are consistently collaborating. It's not just a one-off where we're getting like the odd email here and there. Um, they're turning up week after week to the webinars or, you know, we have this thing called the impact marketplace and they're turning up and they're supporting. And I think that consistent collaboration um, is something that I feel has developed during this season. Um, I, you know, that goes without saying in terms of um, client support and the community focus. But yeah, that consistent collaboration was key, I think, in the change in the the change in the impact atmosphere. Have you seen collaboration engagement go up, Tony, in your world? I, I think so. I think this is, you know, anytime you've got, you know, whether it's, whether it's a, 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 an, 
a disruption that's leading to something positive or whether it's a, a disruption like, like this pandemic where it's leading to a lot of uncertainty. I think at the end of the day, people want, want to come together to be able to, uh, to, to move through a journey through that together. Uh, I mean, the human spirit, we want to be part of a community, yeah. uh, really. And I think that uh, I think that that creates an even more, uh, a higher level of importance for the, the community itself, whether it's impact, whether it's, you know, leading edge and, and any of the other uh, associations and networks that are out there. Uh, yeah. So, so yes, I, I, I definitely do see that there's increased. I, I think one thing that will be interesting to see is, uh, uh, you know, here, here in uh, leading edge here in North America, we've got a number of, uh, a number of large firms that because uh, they have national practices, you'll see, historically, you'll see firms sending teams over, uh, flying over other firms to, uh, you know, to do, you know, audit, uh, you know, uh, observations, inventory observations and things like that. I wonder if that will change and the collaboration around that people will be less willing to jump in planes, but let's leverage some of our, uh, our fellow regional members to, you know, to help out with some of that, which, which I think that's more effective, more efficient, you know, overall. Uh, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Well, Tendai, it's obvious that some firms have not come out of this well, perhaps not your own member firms, but some accounting firms have got it wrong. The leadership has not been strong. They've not perhaps looked after their staff or clients as well as they could have done. They've not really been equipped to deal with this. So if we look at ways to improve, what do you think accounting firms need to get better at or need to get improvements on if they're going to deal with this new world? Um, I think it starts with a mindset change. Like you said, um, maybe in accountants in the past have got a bad rap about not wanting to change or being slow to adapt. And this season has proved that they can. And so we can do it. So I think first of all is that mindset. And then in terms of leadership, I think um, we're going to see maybe a, a more, I don't know, communicative, um, supportive style of leadership emerge. I'm thinking about the accounting firm where half the staff have been furloughed, half the staff are still in the office. When those people come back, is there going to be an imbalance within the firm's culture? Because, well, you've been paid 80% and you were just sitting there while we had double the work, you know, to cover for you while you're away. Like, what's the culture going to be when those people come back in, for instance? I think so with the mindset change means leaders may need to focus a bit more on some of those cultural issues um, um, within their organizations. I think there will be an emotional impact after all this is over. And to firms will need to accommodate and make space for, for that. I'm coming from a family where I have very, very close family members who have been affected by this. And just going through those days and weeks, not knowing if people were gonna live or die and what our, what our family setup was gonna look like afterwards has given me you know, a real firsthand experience of, we don't just get better and come out of this. There's, there's a lot of residual, um, I don't know, impact that this has. And I think that will be the same for people coming back to work, coming back into the offices. Um, I think we have to be mindful of, of that cultural need or that cultural shift that's going to happen. And our leaders should be thinking in that direction, I feel. Mm. Johnny, I wonder if you've come across the notion that this is not going to be a reboot, but a reset. So a reboot is where you turn your computer off and you turn it on and everything's back how it was. But a reset is you turn off and you, t you turn it back on. And as Tendai was hinting at, this is not going to be the same as it was before. So what areas do you see firms needing to improve to get back to where they were and even push on? Yeah, I, I think a couple of things. One, you know, leading into the pandemic, uh, you know, there was a lot of talk about the emerging technologies. Um, you know, robotic process automation, machine learning, you know, AI, things like that. I, I, I think as hard as it may be, I think, I think firms need to stop, uh, not stop investing in that, in that uh, future. You know, Tendai, you use the term, you know, future proofing your firm. I, I think, I, I think that um, this pandemic is going to 
has only reinforced the need to be able to better leverage some of that technology. So I think, uh, I think, and, and that before you even get to that implementation of that technology, you need to make sure that you've got really efficient processes. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's still problematic in a lot of firms out there, uh, you know, across the globe, you know, in terms of how they actually get work done. Uh, so I think it's, uh, continue to invest in that technology, continue to invest in, in, in the efficiencies, uh, uh, you know, for sure. I, I also think the second thing is, is focusing in, you know, one of the, one of the, um, one of the nagging problems that, that a lot of firms have is that there's never been a client that they've met that they don't like. And, and so sometimes what'll happen is, you know, a firm can get to be very, very wide, but not very deep. And, and I think that uh, I, I think that it is important uh, for firms to to really focus in on more of an industry or sector focus. Uh, you know, a, as they move forward, to really be able to uh, develop much deeper expertise uh, and thought leadership. Now. Somebody might somebody might say, "Well, well, Tony, wait a second. If I had doubled down in the hospitality industry, I'd yeah. be in a whole lot of hurt." You're right going now. down, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I get that, and so I, I think that uh, I, I think the reality, though, is that there are, you know, th there are certainly industries, you know, that can be focused on that are wide enough and broad enough that can be stalwarts. Uh, while, you know, while you can have some ancillary uh, industries as well. But I, I think the, you know, the, the age of the, the mass generalist, I think, is where, where we really need to continue to work on and improve, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to move away because clients are demanding more, you know, more value. And you used the word invest a couple of times, Tony. I wrote down invest in technology, invest in efficiencies and processes. But leadership in firms are asking, where do we focus? Where do we invest? And we can talk about industry sectors and specialties, but what about do we invest in marketing? Do we invest in our people now? Do we need to upskill our people to deal with the new world? And there are probably, as usual, lots of lots of demands on your budget. Where exactly do you invest? Because you you don't have unlimited pots of money now, do you? you? You don't. I think some of the investment's going to be balanced because some of the investment today in technologies is only going to help uh, with the ability to invest in people yeah. uh, as we move forward. But, but you're right. I mean, this is at the end of the day, this is a people uh, business. And, and while technologies might enable us uh, to get certain rote things done more effectively, more efficiently, to be able to upskill people. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not, if you're not continuing to invest in people, it, it's it, it, it will be a short it will be a shortened game. Yeah. Uh, in, in the end, so I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Tenda, anything you want to add to that about what improvements firms need to make or where they need to be investing in? Um, I think, you know, this, this whole situation has been a steep learning curve, I think, especially for some of the smaller firms um, who may have been a bit slow on the digitalization front. So I think um, this season has highlighted maybe some of those gaps that before we even invest in the AI or all of these bigger projects, it's just making sure we've shored up our defenses. Um, in making sure we can now work remotely, we can now have the systems in place to at least keep the workflow going. And I think, yeah, it definitely starts with the people, making sure they're all trained up. I mean, we've had 365 for a few years, but we've never got any training, you know, so we've kind of cobbled together how to use Teams, but we had to pay for proper training in the season because we realized um, for what we needed to achieve, we couldn't do it on you know, like a wing and a prayer. And it's the same for the smaller firms, they still need to be looking at making sure that now that this has happened, it could happen again. Yeah. Have they got even the small things? Do they have, I mean, a Zoom license is a hundred pounds a year or something. Like, do they at least have those small systems in place now um, to just get, you know, to get rid, because those are the things that can niggle and, you know, frustrate in terms of everyday workflow. And then look at the bigger picture. I think, um, Tony mentioned about AI, um, about um, robotics, I think. And I remember Deloitte did a study in China um, looking at the Internet of Things and how to best um, integrate um, accounting firms, how they could 
you know, get a look in on this industry of the Internet of Things. And they found things like, you know, there was um, opportunities in audit, um, you know, in stock rotations and, you know, um, making sure that you know, there was less thefts or less losses and so forth. Um, so we are going in the right direction. But I think now we have to be so much more technology and future focused. Um, but it depends, I think, also on the objectives of each of each firm. It, you know, survival. Do you want to thrive? Do you want to? What, what is it that you want to do? It's going to mm -hmm. start with your people. Then we add on the technology, and then we see where we go. Yeah, and Tony, you've been in the accounting game a long time. You do wonder, don't you, what this pandemic would have done had it had occurred 10, 15 years ago, where we didn't have the technology to function as we are. We didn't have things like Zoom, did we? Uh, no, and that that's actually an interesting question, maybe a, a discussion for another day. Uh, but uh, I think it would have been very different. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's interesting because, uh, you know, I, I, I've been I've been fortunate because you know, I, I've had Zoom for probably six or seven years. So, you know, the whole notion of Zoom, very, very comfortable. Uh, although I would definitely say th that the comfort level has increased significantly <clears throat> in, in so much that I, I, I occasionally get somebody saying, oh, can we just talk on our cell phone so that we're not on Zoom? <laughs> uh, just yeah. because it would be nice to not have a Zoom call. Uh, but but I, I I agree with your 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 notion there. It, it would be very very different. It would have been much more I, I think much more impactful. The I think the decline would have been much steeper mm. and much sharper. And you adopted early. You probably got your iPad and your iPhone before everyone else as well, Tony. Did you? You gadget man. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah Tendai. It would have been a very different situation had this have happened 10 15 years ago because we couldn't be face to face and that's what is holding people together right now yes but some of the biggest co corporations in the world um were built at a time when there wasn't you know um video when point. there wasn't the zooms and yeah, um our microsoft <laughs> we were talking about bezos uh, um a little while ago and at the end of the day amazon is from the 90s you know like we barely you know we were just at the beginning of online shopping yeah you know and somehow they managed to do it you know before we had phones in our houses we went to the pay phone before mm. I, it would have been different don't get me wrong but humans we are very good at adapting with working with what we have and we would have figured it out i i'm just yeah i just think we would have there's no sure. way we couldn't <laughs> we're coming into land now and uh, let's look at the future uh, with a global recession looming, there's no doubt gross domestic product has gone down in here in the UK and in many other places. We know we're in for a tough time. We know that loans that businesses and firms have taken out are going to be comparable. We know that tax bills that have been deferred are going to hit us down the road. So, Tony, let's start with you on this. And what advice or encouragement do you offer to the accounting profession for the remainder of 2020 and what might be an even more difficult 2021? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that uh, 2020, I, I think what, what I'm hearing from, from firms is the pandemic took what looked like it would be a great year and turned it into a good year. Mm, that's good, yeah. Uh, uh, I think, having said that, I think that they're looking at 2021 because uh, accounting is a lagging you know, industry. 2021 is going to be the struggle, but but let, let's let's take a look at just the way this developed, you know, and, and this uh, global recession. Typically, there is if you look at the recession uh, in you know 08 09, the recession in the early 2000s, and then even the recession, um, you know, in the eight, eight, in the 80s, you know, there was some external event that that really created. Uh, you know, created an economic event, whether it's, you know, the, the loan crisis of the 0809, whether it's economic policy of, of the 90s, you know, the, the drop off of the YK2 spending in the early 2000s, there was some sort of an event. And then you had the job loss. Well, here, what you had is you had all the job loss immediately. And so th this kind of recession, uh, you know, and you had, at least in the US, you had you know, um, 
you know, uh, the calls that were in a recession after, you know, after three weeks, not the three to six months, which is typical. And so I think that, I think people need to be prepared for, you know, for a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different variables. Is the recovery going to be V-shaped? Is it going to be W-shaped? Is it going to be U-shaped? Uh, but I do think it is going to be, it is going to be a lengthy recovery period. Mm. I think it is not going to be the same for all industries. So it's, you look at, you know, you look at obviously hospitality has just been, has been hurt, obviously. I think you look at energy uh, here in the States, you're starting to see some uh, bankruptcies in the energy, energy companies, you know, energy at the price of what, nine or $10 a barrel. That is significantly below uh, what economists are saying would be an equilibrium oil price. So that industry is going to be hurt. But mm -hmm. then you look at anything that's technology and online related. I, I mean, that's, that's going, you know, significantly. You look at Microsoft, you look at Amazon, you know, you look at a uh, Alphabet, Apple. I, I mean, all of those companies are doing very, very well and those sectors are doing well. Uh, and so I think, I, I think it's, it's, it's really, uh, it boils down to some basics, if you will. Um, number one, stay close to your clients. Stay close to your clients. Stay close to your clients. <laughs> uh, it, you know, and, and followed, and it's really not a, a number two. It's, it's like number one A and number one B is stay close to your talent. You know, there, there's, our firms have a lot of talented people, you know, there. And, and so it's staying close to them and, uh, and, and, and really keeping, you know, that connectivity going uh, that I think is going to really be critical as we, as we, you know, move through the pandemic, come out of the pandemic and settle in for what might be a longer extended period in some industries and maybe not so long in others. Mm -hmm. uh, so clients, talents, preserve cash and remain positive. There it is in a nutshell. That's a very encouraging message. <laughs> Tendai is clapping at that one. What would you say, Tendai, by way of words of encouragement or advice for the accountants watching and listening? Hey, Tony, I've just met you and I just feel like we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I feel great. like just saying what he said. What he said, yeah. He, Tony's good <laughs> like that. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, stay alert, you know. Um, with all the foresight in the world, we could we never imagined this year would be like this. So, which means complacency is not an option. <laughs> we gotta stay alert, we gotta plan, plan, plan. We gotta, I don't know, contingencies of contingencies. Difficult to know what to plan for, but <laughs> you gotta just stay in that mindset of, we can't be complacent. Things can change in a minute and we need to have systems in place that allow us to accommodate that change. But, ten, oh. but ten, if you think of the accountants, if the troubles that we've got coming up, the accountants have all the answers because if businesses are struggling, and they need help, the accountants can help with that. If they are thriving and innovating and looking at new possibilities, the accountants can help with that. So the accountants are so well placed as that trusted advisor to stand in the gap and drive forward any growth and recovery. I think so. I mean, for most of our members, they've been really busy during the season. However, it's, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. So we'll see like when it's time to actually, um, you know, to actually um, remit what's going to happen with them. But yeah, you're absolutely right that they're best placed. But there is still this thing about, you know, staying connected is um, stay connected with, you know, with your clients, stay connected with your people. I think, um, you know, stay connected in your community. Don't stop collaborating, you know, be consistent, you know, in delivery. Um, I'm not somewhere, I, like I, I used to find the phone very difficult, but I don't know, I, you know, it's phoning people, picking up, I don't know, it, it just used to take me a while. And I'm um, having to learn during the season how important it is to just be consistent, consistent in my communications, consistent in replying to emails, little things like this, where before I'd be out of the office for a week, so there was a reason. Now it's like, nah, you know, just stay on top of it, because I think having that consistency and that collaboration, that connection, will really help and also you know seek out new opportunities and it could be that some accounting firms are going to pivot and find a new service line it could be that if yes, some a lot of clients are on the decline you might end up having an insolvency arm to your practice i don't know or you might partner with it you know there's so many ways in which we can develop our business 
for us as impact, what we started is um, something called the impact marketplace, whereby um, every couple of weeks, members, clients, whoever, we have a Zoom call, bring your product, bring your project, and let's see if we can find someone to help you. You know, and that's been really, really good. That's been a positive thing where members were looking and saying, well, you know, business is down because our client's business is down. What can we do? What can we do as impact? And I said, okay, well, bring your clients. Let's bring everyone's clients. Let's see if we can, you know, connect clients with clients. You know, if someone's looking for a hotel and someone's selling a hotel, let's bring them together. And we're finding that the marketplace has become the perfect um, platform for us mm. um, to do that. Um, so if a niche industry like an accounting association can find you know, creative ways to make business on behalf of their members, how much easier will it be for accounting firms? Sure. And uh, just to clarify, Tendai is not calling for creative accounting here, Tony, but she's saying, she's saying accountants need to be more entrepreneurial, and I'm sure you'd go Absolutely. along with that. A a a absolutely, absolutely. Well, one of the things I guess I I'd like to leave, uh, you know, the 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 audience with is uh, when when we talk about remaining positive, it, it there's it, there's this mindset about um, changing it from I get to do this versus I have to do this. Yeah. And oftentimes when you look at things as I get to do this, uh, that just helps kind of that that frame. Uh, yeah. focus a little bit more so yeah so let's go I'll, I'll go out and get to do love that that is a great right. message to finish on tony sapaniak tender white it's been a privilege to have you with us today uh, just three of us in total but uh we shared a lot of great insights we smiled a lot had a lot of fun uh, put a few things right and hopefully we've given some inspiration to the accountants out there that this is now a good time to belong to get involved with the network and association, to lean into that. It's a time to collaborate and connect. And uh, as Tony put it so succinctly, keep your people close, keep your clients closer. And if we do that, we'll get through this. So I want to thank you so, both so much for your contributions today, for your time. And uh, I'm going to let you go now because you've probably got another Zoom call in the next five <laughs> or 10 minutes. And that's the way of the world, isn't it? So go on your way, stay safe. And uh, we'll see you on another panel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye now.